guys saw the clear cut near there, right? You were saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's see how close we can get to that in the truck. Well, that, no, that you can drive right into. Okay. I think the one we want to try and find is the one you guys saw by plane. So I think, yeah, I think there's actually a lot of logging around. The Back down in there. Yeah. Well, it's 9.30, so I think let's have our coffee and let's hit the road. Yes. Yeah. Interesting and nuanced vision of how to maintain ecosystems living naturally and developing naturally. Um, I loved getting to explore the forest with the teams and see how they do what they do. And it was just a really brilliant selection of professionals, individuals, scientists, ecologists, the environmental commissioner. Um, and we got from a place that was, um, we got the depth and an understanding of the land and how it works, but we also got an understanding of the political side and those political vested interests. Um, and I think because we had such informed subjects, it allowed them to illuminate the intricacies and the nuances of these issues. Gorgeous cinematography, very sharp and clear framing. Um, there's still a play to it as well, which I really appreciated, and a great encompassment of the environment to get a real sense of its vastness and beauty. So some, some lovely aerial shots, my goodness. I like the historical background that the professionals give um, about this park, especially because there are many who probably don't know about this park. There are many in the world, um, and many there are many, these are many in the world because uh, they are in danger. Um, this helps you understand the sort of relevant information. The cinematic choices are very important as this is an environmental film and it's important to display visually the landscape and how it's being affected. It is a perfect example of learning uh, from our past to see what our future will be. The protection of the ecosystem in the Algonquin Park is critical and the doc does a wonderful job of showing how we've influenced it, how nature has influenced it, and how we need to make the necessary improvements to ensure that that ecosystem can be sustained in the future, especially considering the impact that we know climate change is already having on our ecosystem. These people's earnest passion and love for the environment, their respect for it comes through in each and every one of the interviews that we see here. And we come to truly appreciate this park, all that it's offered, the animals that um, have a home in it and all that they offer and are reminded of the vital role we play in ensuring their sustainability and survival. Interesting to learn about, um, you know, what these uh, the environmentalists are learning about the Algonquin area. It's interesting that they went to the logging people and talked to them too, and you know, kind of got both sides of it. But um, you know, the case being laid out for um, the necessity to have these trees for the health of the environment, for the health of the local wildlife. It was definitely well laid out here. Um, yeah, so it was it was just really really well done, nicely directed, nicely edited, uh, good use of score. Um, everybody on screen, everybody that was interviewed, everybody did a wonderful job communicating. You know, the the interviewer did a great job and and talking to these folks and really getting them to come out and give them the info that we needed to understand everything. Only a third of it is a true protected area. That's shocking, um, but I can see you know from I love seeing some of the old footage and the history of you know, where this started and how it got to where it is. That was great. I love the cinematography. I thought it was really great. And just some beautiful shots of the land. Really good use of music. I uh, like the music too. Uh, and then the other side of it is, as far as the people who are doing the logging, that the direct employment is in the thousands. Um, and it's good for the health of the economy. But I can see that there's a need for, you know, a sustainable forest management plan too um, because you don't want to lose the history in these trees that are so old um, beautiful overhead shots by the way too i really like those a lot
you got a lot of different perspectives um, and perspectives kind of from both sides, uh, pro and against. And it did a really great job of kind, kind of showing you what logging is like from all angles. Um, definitely like gives you something to think about because now moving forward, one the, uh, the issue gets brought up in you know side conversations or I just kind of hear it randomly like I have a much better understanding and can actually you know maybe weigh into those conversations a little more and I think that that's the kind of goal with something like this is to spread awareness to spread knowledge because obviously logging is a huge industry and it will kind of keep affecting parks. It'll keep affecting, you know, the environment. And the more people that, you know, are at least semi-knowledgeable about it or at least have, you know, a base understanding of it can start to help form opinions, can start to, you know, be a voice. I did like that they're very passionate about preserving the ecosystem, which we need. And they were even explaining different, the difference between logging and sustainability and what they're doing, which was helpful with this documentary. We really need, really did explain a lot. It showed what's happening in this area. It's showing everything, what it's doing, why the government's doing it. It's one of the few places that is still going on. It's showing it. They showed the tenseness between it where like that guy said there was a mailbox with the save the turtle sign and then he turned around and it said said carved into the turtle f the turtles which shows that the people who are doing their job don't really care and this stuff like this documentary should be shown to governments should show if they would care it should show to people with hearts i should say people who have souls and hearts that would actually care about what's going on that have the power to stop it um people who would be able to preserve the area because let's face it if the government cared they'd stop it 